March the 3rd, and though beaver and otter trapping seasons are over, that doesn't mean the learning stops. Headed back over to Burkholder Taxidermy uh, with Josh Burkholder this morning. Uh, we may recall earlier this fall, or this past fall, we went over and he showed us how to cape a deer for a uh, shoulder mount and also how to cape one to follow all the new state rules and regulations. Well, we're headed back there today. He is going to mount this beaver for me. First beaver I've caught. You know, we, again, we have not had beavers in our county um, for very long. We're getting some more. I actually trapped, uh, caught this beaver that he's gonna be mounting a county to the west. And being that it's the first beaver I ever caught, I'm gonna get it mounted, and B, I don't know exactly how to skin one. I assume it's similar to skinning a coyote, fox, or raccoon, but uh, not knowing, sometimes you just gotta go learn that stuff for yourself. So we're gonna head over there. He's gonna show us how to skin a beaver uh, for a life-size mount. So we're headed, headed there now. Let's go say hi to Josh and uh, skin a beaver. Uh, skinning a beaver today for life-size mount. Um, I got a little head start this morning on Josh's beaver here. Uh, a couple little incisions I make, um, and I'll explain why I make them because uh, as far as doing the mount, um, two little two to three inch cuts on the front hands, and you can see where I opened it there. And that's as far as I'm going to go on them till I get him skinned down. I'm going to tube him. Um, these fine-haired uh, mammals, beaver, river otter, um, I like to tube them instead of doing a dorsal cut or a ventral cut. Uh, it just hides your, your stitching a little better. So what I did, I'll turn them around here, is I opened up the beaver's feet. Okay, they got real big webbed feet. And what I, what I, my goal was is to follow that pad along the hairline so that when I put them back together, it's going to disappear. So uh, straight across, right above the vent, and right down the tail. We're going to use the original tail on this one. Um, I went ahead and split it, and I skinned right down the inside. Um, you see there, it opens it right up, just full of fatty tissue. Uh, we're going to want to get all that out of there. Uh, before we flesh it and uh, get it salted and sent to the tannery. So I'm going to go ahead and keep skinning um, to where I can get him hung up. But what we're doing on this beaver, if you can see them feet, they got real heavy bones in them, in them toes. So we're going to want to get them pulled out uh, before it goes to the tannery. So I got that pad skinned off, starting to expose them feet. So... What I typically do is you just work your hands up in there and start to separate. Get my nippers here. Start skinning back and we're exposing them toes. And I will just work my side cuts right up in there and start pulling that toe a little loose. snip it off and they're a little smaller on the outsides these two center ones are big ones so you really want to get down in there but we're just getting around that knuckle just take your time at this point and just because that skin's really thin. Yeah, just a little pressure and keep, just keep pulling. You can see them fingers coming out now, or toes, I guess. We're on the back, so.
Yep, so there's one hind foot. These hind feet are half your battle. Uh, they just take time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skin down this side here. Start opening this tail up. A lot of this I go and feel uh, just to make sure you got it separated. Caster glands right there, just make sure you don't run a knife in them, it's going to stink. Um, a lot of these mammals got glands and you just try to avoid them, otherwise it smells the shop up a little bit. So, Go ahead and work on this other foot here, get it. Now, if a fellow was going to do a beaver in the round, how would he do it differently? Uh, typically, a beaver in a round, um, you're coming dead center. So, for me, the easiest part is I'll lop them legs, and you'll be two, two openings here and then two openings here. We're not going to utilize the feet on a round. Mm -hmm. um, and then that whole hide will lay open, and you'll have four holes where them feet are at. Uh, typically, we'll sew them up if you're going to hoop it. Uh, kind of go from there. So, yeah, there are definitely different preferences or, or methods for skinning, depending on what you're wanting to do uh, with the mammal. This is my preference for beaver. Um, the less damage to the the skin and fur on a mount, the better off you are. So, again, we're just we're tubing them. So. So yeah, same thing on this one, just turn it inside out, just work around them toe bones.
So we got both feet skinned out. Now I can hang him up, makes life a lot easier. We're just gonna keep skinning down these legs, get them exposed. You're gonna have flesh on your hide and everything, which is not a big deal because we're gonna put it on the wheel. Got a little infection there. Something going on right here. Yeah. Scrumptious. Yeah. Definitely a process that requires gloves. Yeah, I recommend gloves. From here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lop the tail off right below the vent. We'll finish taking that out once we get the hide off. You know, I could actually just do it now since I got it hanging here. It'd probably see it a little better. We're just skinning the bone out of that tail. Again, you're going to have some fatty tissue uh, on that tail. We'll clean it up with the wheel. Again, just really use and feel. I got my hand on the back side of the tail so I can feel my knife when it's back here and I'm not going to cut through. It does start to get pretty thin. So I got the inside of my tail out. We'll have to clean some of that up when we uh, when we finish fleshing it. Uh, but beaver tail. <laughs> And just keep working down. I uh, just I usually keep my knife facing inward toward the meat. Uh, less chance of running it through the hide. You get off these hips, um, she'll start skinning down fairly easy. A lot of connective tissue up toward the base of that tail.
You can see where I got it skinned off that base where that meat's knifed up. That holds pretty tight. And now you've really exposed that fascia uh, between the skin and the, the carcass. So just keep working your way down and light pressure pulling helps. And I opened the castor gland. Did you? Oh, <laughs> it's, it. it's leaking on me. I don't know that I opened it. It's leaking. I don't smell it yet. Bring your face a little closer. <laughs> yeah. Keep pulling on the hide and working your way down. We're starting to sneak up on them front arms. Really be careful on the belly side, that skin's real thin. Doesn't take much to cut through, but. So if you can see right here are my front arms, just starting to poke through. So I'm gonna work along the edges of them. It's getting down the inside of that neck. Right there's one arm, got it opened up, and if you remember, I put a slit in it uh, before we started, so just kind of skin down around that front of that arm, and that hand's going to pop right out for you, okay? Do the same on the other side. Just follow that fascia right up around, and got your opening. So both hands are sticking out now and skin's pretty skin and uh, thin and delicate around the hands. So just take your time.
They've definitely got a lot shorter fingers than they do toes. Um, as you come around to them, we're just snipping them off. There's one hand skinned. It got a heavy bone in the front hand. It's almost like a false thumb. It's right under the pad. Uh, for anybody that skinned hands out, it, Real easy spot to lay a hole in the in the hand, and, and by no means is it ruined if you do. It's just a little extra work at the end fixing it. There, both your uh, fronts are skinned. Now we'll work down around the head, but I gotta put an edge on my knife because it's about dull. <laughs> So we're coming up on your ears. So right there, they're, they got really, really, really small ear canals. Just keep the knife tight to the skull and, and you won't have to worry about really laying that ear open. Again, just a spot where you slow down a little bit, take your time. So right there's both my ears, both sides of the head. Little, yeah, they're just little. Your eyes are going to be right in front. We're sneaking up on them right now. So my ears are here. My eyes are here. Again, just I usually try to keep the point of my knife just kind of poked down in toward the eyeball. and a little pressure pulling down. You can see both the eyes now. Okay, I'm just gonna come underneath them, right against the bone. Real easy spot to cut that eye right open. But you got all that tissue around the eye, the eyelid and that, and that'll all get turned uh, when we go into the fleshing process, so. Real thin skin around the mouth. Again, I just really try to visualize, and you can feel here the inside of that jaw muscle. If you can visualize, my nose is right through here. They got real fleshy cheeks. Um, so again, I'm just skinning down and, and at the same time feeling, I know where I'm at. Keep my knife up toward the inside of that 
lip or inside jaw so I've got my finger in it now I don't know if you can see or not but that's the inside of my mouth he's got his tongue in there um, there's not a ton of connective tissue around this bottom bottom jaw around the teeth so we'll skin that first Yes, they are. So the lower jaw is off. You can see it's a real fleshy cheek. Um, you can see your top incisors there. I'm just following right along that top jaw, taking that flesh right off the bone. That, that, that skull bone will come right to the base of that nose, so just keep following that bone down and cut right into the cartilage. And there we have it. You can see the, the nose, the inside of the nose, the eyes, the ears, and the cheek tissue, so you're good to go there. Well, cool, man. Yep. Appreciate it again. Not a problem. Appreciate it again. I hope you all Learned a little bit. If you know how to skin a beaver, great. If you didn't know, now you do. <laughs> so we've got a lot more things coming up. It's springtime. It's here. Shed hunting. Um, maybe get out, some, do some more coyote calling yet. And uh, that would be time to chase those turkeys. Right. Yeah. You ready for that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, hope you all learned a little something today. Please, again, like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And go out and live the well hunt life. Cool, man. Appreciate it. No problem.